Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at Lenovo's answer to the Microsoft Surface. This is the ThinkPad Tablet X1, and it's got some similarities to the Surface, but it does some things a little bit better, which we will cover, of course, in the course of this review. But I do want to mention, in the interest of full disclosure, that this came in uh, to the channel on loan from Lenovo. So when I'm done reviewing it, it goes back to them. I have no financial relationship with the company. They're not paying for this review. They're not reviewing this video either before it is posted, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into the hardware here and then we'll uh, see how it performs. So this is uh, a tablet, of course, and it can be detached from its included keyboard, much like the Microsoft Surface can be. Uh, so pretty thin design here, pretty lightweight also. This is 1.69 pounds or 766 grams. When it is docked with the keyboard dock, it goes up to 1,066 grams or 2.35 pounds. I really like just how powerful the magnet is uh, on the latching mechanism here. It's very satisfying. It just grabs it and uh, pulls the... Uh, pulls everything together really nicely and there's no real lag either when they reconnect it's a very fast uh, process here when you get everything reattached uh, the keyboard of course will dock in uh, like so now this is a 12 inch display this is an IPS display you do get a little bit of uh, image bleeding I'm seeing here on the side but it's nice and bright uh, pretty much in line with a lot of other uh, displays I've seen from Lenovo this is a FHD plus 2160 by 1440 so I guess it's not quite quad HD uh, but it is better than a standard HD display but not quite quite as uh, high resolution as that 4K display we saw on a similar computer from Dell the other day. So that's what you got in there. Core M processor, 6Y57 uh, at 1.1 gigahertz, 8 gigabytes of memory soldered in, not replaceable, and a 256 gigabyte SSD, and it has AC wireless. Now, what I really like about uh, this design is that the kickstand goes in kind of the opposite direction of the Surface uh, kickstand. So on the Surface, you'll remember that uh, that one kind of sits like that. Uh, this one sits more flat. So when you're on a laptop kind of mode, it actually is easier to use because I don't feel like I'm balancing the device on my lap when I'm using it. That uh, back kickstand here has a lot more surface area. It really does lay flat and uh, it does make for a much more comfortable typing uh, scenario here, especially when you're in laptop mode. But even on a desk as well, uh, it's very uh, positionable. So you have a lot of different uh, ways you can position it pretty much any which way you want all the way down to the desk if you wish to do that. Uh, so really nice design in here. They even tucked away a micro SD card card slot in the back there too if you want to augment some of its uh, onboard storage there. Uh, the keyboard is also very nice. This is a ThinkPad keyboard through and through. Same size. It has that same ThinkPad kind of feel with really uh, nice travel on the keys, which is nice also considering how thin uh, this keyboard dock is. It does come with it. Uh, you get the keyboard dock and a pen along with the tablet, of course, for uh, $1,349 in this particular mode. You get the same trackpad you see on a number of other ThinkPads along with the little uh, nub here. So if you would like to uh, navigate your computer with your little uh, red thing here. You can do that uh, on this version as well. Although for some reason it just stopped working here. I'll have to reattach it and get it to go again. Uh, there is a backlight on here also, which you can activate by uh, just hitting the function key and the space bar. So you do have uh, all the accoutrements of a full-fledged laptop, yet you have this very small form factor. My only gripe with the keyboard is that it does kind of uh, bend a little bit when you're in this uh, mode here. So the keyboard does give a little bit, as you can see, especially when you're kind of in the middle here, it does do that a little bit, but uh, it is very comfortable to type on, surprisingly so, uh, even on a lap. And there are a couple of ports worth mentioning, including a USB Type-C port, which is on the side here. So you've got a USB Type-C, which is both for USB devices as well as charging. You have a USB 3.0 port over here. Uh, there are stereo speakers on it, one on each side. So this is this one, and there's the other one over here. Not very loud, actually. I was expecting a louder sound out of this, uh, but it does uh, sound okay. It's not too tinny, and there is good stereo separation. Display port over here for plugging in external displays. Uh, they do have some other dock that they're going to uh, come out with. They basically sit in between the keyboard dock and the tablet. One of them is going to be a projector dock with an HDMI output. Uh, so there's going to be some little attachments you can add to this uh, to kind of extend its capabilities a little bit. I don't have any of those to look at today, but uh, those will be coming out very shortly. Uh, there is a headphone microphone adapter here, volume rocker up and down, uh, and a Kensington lock as well. Your power switch is up here on the top. And there's also a fingerprint reader over here for uh, you know, getting into your machine with the 
uh, new authentication methods that are available to you in Windows 10. And you've got a camera on the back, eight megapixel camera actually with a flash built in too. So battery life isn't the best on this. I do really like that uh, latching mechanism there. Uh, but you get about probably about five or six hours provided uh, you turn the display down pretty decently and you're not taxing the processor too heavily. Uh, so I was, uh, you know, th th this is the problem when you get into this form factor is that you really can't fit a lot of battery in here and still have the same weight and size. Uh, so you are going to get about five or six hours. But one of the docks that they're coming out with that will uh, sit in between the keyboard and the tablet is a extended battery dock that will give you another four or five hours or so. So there is an option to uh, get a little bit more battery life. That will add some, uh, some bulk but also some weight to the package. But if you want to go all day with it, you'll probably need to buy that particular device to uh, get yourself uh, additional battery life. So now we're going to take a look at its performance. We're going to start with the pen and then we'll go in and look at all the other stuff we usually look at. So this is the pen that it comes with. They do have a little loop on the uh, keyboard dock here if you want to store it while you're walking around with it. They also have another little piece of plastic that'll plug into the USB 3 port that can hold the pen when you don't have the keyboard nearby. That's a little bit weird for me, but uh, you do have an option to uh, use that USB port as a pen holder if you want. Uh, over here you can see when I get the pen closer to the screen that uh, it's detecting its presence and there's a cursor moving around very similar to what we've seen on the surface. I'm using OneNote right now. And as I draw on the screen here, you'll see uh, the pen will get thicker the harder I push. So it does have some decent pressure sensitivity on it also. So a very uh, thinner line here and then I can push down harder and get a thicker line. Uh, it does have a Gorilla gl uh, Glass screen so you should be okay with uh, pushing down a little bit hard on it. Uh, what's nice too is that it does have good wrist detection also so it's not picking up my wrist as I'm writing here even if my fingers are touching the screen. It just ignores the fingers and looks for the pen input as you're writing on it. So a pretty nice little pen here and a good alternative I think to the Microsoft Surface Pen. All right, so let's take a look at some web browsing first. We'll visit my YouTube page and pull up one of my 4K videos here. So we have this playing at 4K, uh, starts up very quickly. Again, we've got that AC wireless built in, so you'll have some pretty decent wireless uh, capabilities here. Uh, and it actually looks really nice. The display is very, very sharp. So this is not a 4K display, uh, but it's slightly better than HD. So when you are playing back uh, 4K videos like this, it will look really, really nice. I don't see any drop frames going on here. We'll go load up the stats for nerds to get confirmation on that. And we're running just fine with no drop frames and really, really nice image quality here. I'm very impressed with uh, the, the balance of this display, both in its color and contrast. Uh, really, really nice to look at and some decent uh, web performance as well out of this. And on the Octane benchmark test, which we run on Google Chrome on all of our devices here on the channel, we got a score of 21,172. That does put it slower than the Dell XPS 12 that is running with a similar Core M5 processor. And I wish I still had it here uh, to do a test to figure out why that was such a disparity. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't have it here any longer. So uh, we will just have to see, take this result for what it is. It is slightly slower than the Dell XPS 12. You'll see in another benchmark in a few minutes that they perform about the same uh, on some 3D graphics stuff. So I'm not sure what's going on here, but uh, I haven't really noticed any issues with browsing the web. Uh, articles come up very quickly as on the New York Times here as they do on other sites. Uh, you saw with the uh, YouTube example there, it really did very well on that as well. And again, I'm really uh, quite pleased with the quality of the display here too. Now ThinkPads are designed for doing work and I've got some work up on the screen right now in Microsoft Word. This is our usual template that we look at, a newsletter template that has a lot of text and graphics. Uh, it's rendering very quickly as I'm scrolling through everything. So that is a, a good sign that we've got some good productivity performance here. I'll take some uh, images and move them around here and resize them. As you can see, everything is responding very quickly to what I'm doing here. Uh, there's really no keyboard lag either as I'm typing things out. So I think if you are doing productivity kinds of things on here like Excel, Word, PowerPoint, uh, all of those things will run quite well. Uh, but games are another story because these don't really have the graphical horsepower to support a lot of the modern games out there, but it is possible to do some gaming on it. We're going to take a look at Minecraft, and then we're going to look at some movies also and see how well you can uh, use this as a, a high bitrate movie playback device. And Minecraft is running pretty well on here, surprisingly so. We're getting frame rates well above 60 right now, uh, and that is running at the full 2160 by 1440 resolution. Uh, this is running with the Optifine Performance Enhancing Plugin, which does give us a little bit of a boost, but anybody can get that plugin to run. So I think for casual games, this is going to do quite well, especially the kinds that you might get from the Windows Store uh, or some of the uh, indie games perhaps on Steam that are not going to tax a graphical processor too heavily. Uh, this is going to do 
quite nicely here. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate test, which measures how well it might do on some of those AAA titles, uh, we got a score of 3,512. It puts it almost identical in its performance to the Dell XPS 12 that we looked at a couple of weeks ago. So that one uh, really lined up quite nicely between the two. They have very similar processors. Uh, so I think, again, for these kinds of games like Minecraft and other casual games, uh, you're going to do well, but just don't expect to run uh, the latest and greatest AAA title on here, as I always caution. Now let's take a look at some movie watching. All right, so I've got a Blu-ray MKV playing here right now. This is the full uh, movie that came right off a of Blu-ray disc. It's 37 gigabytes in size, very high bit rate running off an SSD over there. So it seems to be running uh, just fine. I can skip ahead to different portions of the movie here. Uh, no issues. I was checking the uh, frame rates earlier and it is able to keep up uh, as you would expect it to. So really good performance out of there. And I have to say overall, this is a really nice little tablet device. I haven't been a big fan of this form factor. Uh, this is the one I think I could live with the most because it does work well on a lap and that's been the one issue that I've seen with a number of these is that they haven't really performed all that well as laptops because you have to balance things a little bit differently because there's so many different components that move around but uh, this one really does nicely and I think it's because of the kickstand and how it's designed because it is uh, relatively flat back here and it's not uh, you know propping itself up on its edge it really is uh, laying almost flat and that really does make a very big difference here so nicely performing device overall with the Core M processor battery life isn't the best again about five or six hours but they will have those modules you can stack on uh, to get better battery life in the near future there and if you like the uh, ThinkPad keyboards you will get one on here again I'm just a little bit concerned with the fact that it you know moves so much as you're typing on it but uh, if you are looking for something in this form factor this is a uh, really nice uh, design here from Lenovo this is Lon Seidman thanks for watching this channel is brought to you by my patreon supporters including gold level supporter Shabib if you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.